Hi everyone, this is your Chess Puzzler and welcome to the channel. With so much to do, I have missed out on some very intriguing chess engine games. Will I ever be able to catch up? I hope so. I remember the last game I covered when it comes to the engine games was the round 35 game between Komodo and Houdini. After that, we had a game between Komodo and Houdini again. Then in round 37, Houdini and Stockfish. And then the game of round 42 between Stockfish and Komodo. I'm going to skip these games for now, but I do hope to catch up. What I want to look at today is the fight between Houdini and Komodo, which was only played yesterday. So this game, this is game 170 of round 43. The standings so far are unchanged. Stockfish is very comfortable in first position, then Houdini, and then Komodo. Can Komodo catch up? Yes, but the chance is small. Okay, let's do it. This was, in fact, the worst defeat Komodo suffered in that he was out in only 42 moves. Very strange stuff today. And I will try and pinpoint where the errors had been made. And we're looking at a quite established opening. And this is none other than the Yugoslav attack, the Sicilian Yugoslav. I beg your pardon, the Sicilian dragon Yugoslav attack. So let's bring out the usual moves and move on from here. E4, C5, Knight F3, D6, D4, takes, takes, Knight F6, Knight C3, and now after G6, the bishop came out, and then Komodo gets his bishop on the diagonal. Through f3, castles, bishop c4, and knight c6, this was the last move of the book, an eight move opening book. Houdini went for this queen move, which normally prepares the bishop to squeeze in on h6, but there are so many other things you can go for here. After bishop d7, Houdini goes for it already. He shoots off with this very powerful h4. I'm not sure if you check it out on your own engines, this move is going to be liked. And yet engines are weird, because here we have it. And we had seen this very move before in earlier games. In earlier engine games, black has many responses. By looking at either a move like h5 to stop white from progressing with h5, or even this knight move to either a5, or even maybe slightly better, e5. This move to e5 is just to create some problems for this bishop on c4. It is very strange, in fact, how Komodo chose to deal with his next move. He got the rook out, which is so much unlike Komodo. And we all know why this rook came here, but these tricks are simply not going to do it. Houdini could have gotten his bishop out of the way, or go for what he went for. He exchanged the knights, and when this bishop recaptured, the bishop withdrew to b3. And I think it all starts here, and how Komodo goes about this game. We can see a7 is hanging, but should Komodo cover? It all depends on your own strength. Let's try this queen move to invite the bishop to take a7, and should a7 be removed, well, after simple b6, it will be job done. And always remember those poison pawns. If it looks too easy, it is either a blunder or a trap. b5 is also very playable. If a7 is now removed, let the bishop take him. Big deal. This game is not about who takes what but the end result. You can always afford to give up something to gain a positional advantage. Even in this position, you can go for d5. After e takes, knight recaptures, knight takes, and bishop takes. Should you decide to go on and remove this bishop with your queen, 
after this nasty queen check. After the queen retreats to block, not only the bishop goes, but now everything goes. But we do need to come back to this very move because right after the bishop got back to b3, Komodo went for this very weak a5 after a4. Black does need to keep an eye out across the entire board. h5, I think, was key, but Komodo went for e6. And even though Houdini could have gone for h5 first, the engine went long. Remember that d5 we looked at earlier? Well, this is what Komodo went for. And of course, Houdini attacked the knight. And when the knight went back, here came in this very strong f4. And you can already see how some of Komodo's pieces are beginning to suffer. For starters, this knight here on d7. But most importantly, the bishop on c6. Just look at him and what state he's in. But what about Komodo's other bishop? Well, he's miserable to say the least. And already we can see how bad Komodo is positionally. Komodo got finally h5 out. But after this essential king move, Komodo too went for a king move. Can anyone tell us why this move is necessary? Because I cannot help you here. Why on earth any engine would want to get the king out to this post in the first place. If we assume there is nothing wrong with this king move, which is very, very strange not to assume anything is wrong, the only possible reason for getting the king to h7 is to get this rook back to h8 to protect maybe the weak structure of these king side files. But you tell me where this weakness is right now. Houdini went for this queen repositioning, and we can begin to smell danger. Houdini wiped out any suspicions by pushing on through this f5. And now you tell me how Houdini is going to possibly break through. Since Houdini could do nothing to influence Komodo's king side, he tried it using the other side of the board, and went for this knight move. Taking this knight is a no-no because when this queen gets into b5, this guy's hanging, and of course if Komodo was not in trouble, he would be now. So this explains why the knight was not taken. But by not taking this knight, the problems do not go away, because if the knight is allowed to get into this spot, he's going to be worth just a bit more than a rook. Komodo rushed the queen to b7, and when the knight got a firm grip on d6, this rook here had to move to safety. Even though this rook moved to c7 looks very unnatural, it may be better than how Komodo decided to deal with this problem. He chose best to cover through this rook move. But I got to tell you, this knight here on d6 is so much trouble for every single black piece. And the thing is, Komodo could even consider sacking a piece to remove the danger. Knight takes can't even work because no one says you need to take this knight. There is this very effective move white can go for. And if you're now able to shoot this bishop here to c5, a knight retreat has to be the answer. And now if you send this bishop back to a3, after this queen move to f6, it will be black who's now far better. But we did not account for one variable. It is white to move. And this is why nothing works for black just yet. Houdini never gave a chance to Komodo to implement his tactic. He went for c4. And when c4 was taken, then he got the queen into this spot, and now from a relatively close game, it has now been ripped open. e6 hangs, but also this guy here on g2 hangs. Going for this guy here on g2 would have been ideal, because after the rook moves in to attack the bishop, this bishop can return and attack the queen, and for sure, black has to be better off than how he decided to continue. The engine here went directly and attacked the queen. 
And you know, even this works too. Just go for it and remove this bishop. Okay, you gave up five points for four, but it's all about the position here. And if you want to stretch it a bit further, a5 hangs, the rook on b8 can be attacked, and white has plenty of compensation for handing over his rook. Houdini went for this queen move instead, and since g2 is now covered, Komodo went for the trade of bishops. And now what? Well, there is a bit more going on after this exchange. b7 is now a problem. Komodo covered him with a single push, and before Houdini decides to go about this game on the queen side, he secured h4, and this was necessary if he wants to get this corner rook in the game. Rook d8 got the queen going, and here Komodo decides to get his knight out in the open. But what if Komodo went for this bishop move instead? This bishop right now is so badly positioned, no need to say he's offside. He's doing zilch, nothing, absolutely nothing. The idea of this knight move was simple. Taking this knight is going to drop another pawn, but why on earth would you want to go for this? Well, this is why. Any takers here in two, one and pause. Rook b3, allowing even a5 to drop. Because when g3 comes off, Komodo may well be back into the game. Queen b6 may prompt this rook to go after f4 through this rook move to f3. But if you go into a bit risky, this move to g4 is going to get at least h4 coming off. And this game is wide open to both sides. But Houdini here never took the knight, but went instead for this queen move. We know this bishop on g7 can always come into the game, but Komodo needs to go for this move. Well, he didn't, and decided to get the queen into a7, and here it was the time to remove the knight. But when the bishop came off, the knight returned to attack the queen, and where was his queen to go? Komodo returned her to e7 to protect c5. And what a mess we have. For sure Houdini has taken charge of the game. And if one piece is to be blamed, it has to be this stupid bishop. Yep, I called him stupid because he is. Houdini wanted to take advantage of this position and went for a queen offer. We have been nagging about this bishop to get out. And it's like Komodo listened to us because he finally got this bishop into the game. He placed him on f8, but how effective was this move when Komodo left it so late? It's like you arrive at a train station and the train has left the platform already. And that was the last train on the day. This move to f8 also leaves open a5. But before taking him, who didn't he went for the rook first? And only then he snatched up a5. I'm not sure this way around was better because what good is this rook on h1? Komodo here went for another useless king move. And of course, you see this knight. Well, I'm surprised he left e6 in the first place. But it didn't matter because he returned to it. Queen d7 was getting ready to remove this knight. The obvious response was to move in the rook. So this rook to d1 is unmissable, and yet Houdini misses it. What the engine went for was this rook to c1. But what are the implications if the rook really went for d1? I don't know, possibly rook b8, queen a6, and if now rook b4, to go after this guy, there can only be a5, but it would have been interesting to see what could have happened when the queen squeezes into this spot. Since this rook move to d2 covers everything, I think this game is done. If we return to the game, this rook move to c1 does make sense as Houdini wants to go after this guy on c5, and with the queen double attacking now, c5 is bound to fall. 
Komodo could have removed this knight now that he can, but went for a more daring move and got the rook lined up on the same file as the white king. But when Houdini arrested this guy from the game, Komodo took the chance to hit on the knight. And when the queen recaptured, if you check out what remains, what do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, V, 1, 2, 3, 4 pawns. But is there anything in this position that amounts to a draw for Komodo? Houdini for sure needs to cover the problem with his king because after this queen moved to d1, we would have a situation and Komodo escapes with murder because he comes in with a perpetual. Whether you choose this rook move to c1 because of this. But if you make a king move to h2, where well, the situation and direction of the game makes a 180 degree turn and it will be Komodo who's going to win because white would have triggered itself into a mate. After queen b3, king back to either a1 or b1, choose your pick and boom, queen b2 mate. But of course we would need to come back because we are missing a vital move. In case you didn't realise, it is Houdini to move and not the dragon. So when the queen took d6, Houdini went directly for this king move. And even though the queen could have tried d1 directly, I'm not sure anything is going to work because his rook can step in and the game would have been over. But what Komodo chose to go for must be a blunder. A very serious one too. It's not one of those typical blunders where you miss a piece and the piece is gone, but this. And who would have expected Komodo to go for the ridiculous moves we've seen him go for today. After this queen move, Komodo goes for yet another city response and by getting his king out to this spot on h7, it looked like the engine is suffering from some sort of infestation. Are these guys responsible? Maybe, maybe not. But it's not the first time Komodo suffers. A rook check got the rook to block. And when the rooks came off, one of these two guys is going to walk. No doubt about it. King a3 got the queen in with a check. But after b4, it was game over. And this was it. And I'm not 100% sure but this has been Komodo's fastest defeat in this tournament. And why did this picture unfold? Well, we can blame two pieces. One is the king who went places when it wasn't necessary. But if one piece needs to be punished, it has to be this black bishop who remained idle throughout the greatest part of the game. And Komodo could have known better than to keep him isolated on a spot where he had offered nothing. Absolutely nothing. I'm sure the team behind Komodo are going to pinpoint this, but I don't think there is time for any improvements because this current version of the Dragon cannot be modified in any way until the Premier Division has come to an end. And because of this very poor Komodo performance, we are most likely expecting the other two beasts to make it to the last stages of this championship. Currently, there is no other engine able to touch him. Okay, I will try and keep you updated as usual. So until next time, this was your Chess Puzzler.